Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, with the directors of one of my favorite documentaries in a long time. It's called Song of Lahore, and it features an inspiring journey for Pakistani musicians finding their musical and creative freedom. Get ready for a great time behind the velvet rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. Just complimenting both of you. You took up my 12 to two o'clock in the middle of the <laughs> night time. I really didn't know what to expect with your movie, Song of Lahore, and I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed it, how inspirational it is. Music really is the universal language of freedom and everything, right? It's crazy. Absolutely. It's a, it's a language that everyone speaks. Uh, you don't have to share a culture. You don't have to share religion. You don't have to share uh, a country. Uh, you don't have to share anything. You can come from across the world. But when musicians get together and when they play, they really do just play music. How did you guys find out about the Satchel group? Because they're they're obviously in their pack. They're they're this Pakistani group. It's a heavily oppressed region. They're not really able to make a living or do what they want. How do you guys find this group and and help them kind of flourish? Well, Charmaine actually began the production on her own. She worked on the film for about a year before I got involved. Charmaine, maybe you could talk about the origins of the film? Yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up listening to my grandfather's stories of a very different Pakistan, where you had bands play out on the streets, where you had clubs, and where you had cabarets, and, and huge on jazz, well, jazz groups that would come through Pakistan, but also Pakistani orchestras uh, that would perform. And... It was a Pakistan that I didn't know when I was growing up. So when I heard about this group that had gotten together to preserve Pakistan's traditional instruments, I was intrigued. I wanted to preserve their voices and I wanted uh, for the next generations to understand what our music was like. So, so after working on it for about a year, Charmaine was looking for a partner and through a common friend she found me. We spoke twice and uh, you know a week or two later I was on a flight to Pakistan and uh, jumped right into production and we've been working together for about the last two and a half years finishing the film. One of the things I love is social media changes the world and here are these guys looking for essentially a break like everybody's looking for a break they put a video on YouTube and next thing you know they're flying to New York to play with probably the greatest jazz ambassador that America has, Wynton Marsalis. How crazy is it to see how social media and how one simple video can change the lives of uh, of people? It's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy because, you know, even they didn't expect it. I mean, they just literally put the video on their website and on YouTube and the next day and the day after that, you know, they started getting calls from the BBC and, and other news organizations that had watched the, the clip and, and, you know, started interviewing them and then it just snowballed from there. Social media, you know, brings people together from around the world and you can literally publish your own work and find an audience for it. You no longer need, you know, someone to help you along the way. If you have something that's compelling, the world is your oyster. And the, the video even got to Dave Brubeck himself. And uh, he they wrote. They were doing Take Five, obviously. Exactly. And he wrote them a beautiful letter calling it the most interesting and different recording of uh, Take Five that he had ever heard, which blew them away, of course. One of the things I love is music, as I'd mentioned, is this universal language, this universal culture. But their take on music is so different than what we see here in America. I mean, you could even see with Winton and the band. As they're playing together at Lincoln Center, you can just see them grooving to hearing something so different. How is, how is the band, you know, we, we end with seeing them play in Lahore, but how, how what's happened to them since then? I mean, I, I'm like curious. I'm like, what happened to these guys? Well, they've played a number of concerts. They, they've played a couple uh, more times in Lahore. 
uh, since since you see them in the film playing their first concert in Lahore. So they've played there again. They've played in India. They played another engagement with Jazz Lincoln Center at a big jazz festival in France. And one of the stars from the film, Bakar Abbas, uh, on flute, was even invited. He's so great, by the way. He He's comes so out beautifully great. and really becomes a star in the concert. Uh, he was invited back by Jazz Lincoln Center for, for their gala, uh, where he was featured as a soloist alongside Tony Bennett and Whitney Marsalis. <laughs> well, speaking of him, it's fascinating because we see the humble nature of their lives. I mean, he's making his own flutes, burning the holes into it. I'm thinking to myself, how exact you have to be to make sure that the melodic impressions are going to be correct. And meanwhile, we take all this for granted. We're in this gorgeous theater. These guys are burning holes in flutes. How has this experience changed your lives? Has it opened doors in terms of what they're able to do? Or are they still existing in that type of humble format? You know, they are existing in that humble format, but what it has done is it's cultivated new audiences for them. Uh, it's also bought them international fame. And within Pakistan, they've had a lot of news exposure that has happened. So I think for them, the most important thing is that they want to cultivate an audience within Pakistan. People the next generation who take an interest in the instruments, uh, first listening and hopefully next playing. Has music begun to open up? Because there's also an enormous statement with this movie, which is the suppression of the arts, obviously. And we have it here in America, too, when you see schools canceling uh, music programs and things of that nature, art programs, but obviously not to the degree of what's happening over in Pakistan. But has there been an opening of the arts in Pakistan at all? We think there has been an opening there and, you know, even ever, ever since the concerts that they played in New York and I think with the opening of the film, it's really given them a much higher visibility in the culture there. The media likes to cover it. We're going to be bringing the film there both theatrically and we're going to be doing some uh, screenings with universities and workshops and allow the musicians to play. And we hope that this is going to help to, to revive the culture, revive the interest, and especially amongst the younger musicians or people aspiring to be musicians. Winton had a great comment when he said, these guys really know how to improvise. I mean, these are these are really skilled musicians. You forget about that. I mean, it's an inspirational journey, but you forget these guys are really incredible musicians who come from a lineage of musicians. Talk to me about that lineage, because I think it's important, because we see, obviously, with even the conductor, the, the pride he takes in how he carries his father's legacy in, in creating this and crafting this music. Well, uh, you know, we don't have music schools in Pakistan. Music is uh, carried down from uh, a father to son. Uh, it, it happens at home. You learn at home. And so for years, you had a, a culture in Pakistan where musicians would pass on their instruments through lineage. Uh, but in the 1980s, when we had suppression and uh, the musicians found they could no longer earn a living, they stopped passing it down uh, from father to son. And that's when many of our instruments instruments have already died. We no longer have masters left to play some of our greatest instruments. And so for me, this has been an incredible journey because you know, bringing Song of Lahore, bringing these musicians out to the forefront, uh, I feel has enabled us to not only tell their story, but to get Pakistanis to think about the culture that we're losing, the heritage we're losing, the instruments we're losing. Has fame changed these guys at all? <laughs> so a slight level of fame? Not a bit. And the, uh, these guys are musicians. They, they've, 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 they've always had, they've always had great flair, and uh, and we hope that they will continue to. They're wonderful. Congratulations, guys! Such a beautiful and wonderful movie. Like I said, you never know going in if it's if, what you're going to get. And I was so happy I didn't prep ahead of time or read anything about this. And I walked out and I was like, I can't wait to just meet these guys and really congratulate you guys on a beautiful film. So really great story and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much.